in our previous video, we learned that density is a relationship between mass and volume. That ultimately determines whether things are going to float or sink. Um, when we go swimming or put something in water, some things float, some things sink. Um, so to start out with, we need to understand that water is our metric constant substance. One gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water is equal to one cubic centimeter of water. Therefore, when we take mass divided by volume, one gram divided by one milliliter gives us one gram per milliliter. Water is our constant, and it's the thing we measure most things to um, because it's definitely the most abundant liquid on Earth. So if we look at water as being one gram per milliliter, everything that is greater than 1.1 is going to sink. Um, so 2, 3, 5, 70, whatever. Greater than 1.1 will sink. Anything less than 0.9 is going to float. And the smaller that number, the smaller that decimal value, um, the higher it will ultimately float in water. 0.9 kind of barely bobs at the surface. 0.5 is like half in, half out. 0.2 is really, really high up um, because it has less and less mass in each unit of volume. And we're not just talking about water here, which is kind of a, a common misconception that we science teachers find. Anything can float or sink in anything. Um, with the exception of solids, floating and sinking solids, but you know, liquids and gases and then solids can float um, and liquids and gases as well. So if we look at the earth, we have the land, rocks, sand, etc. And all of that stuff has a density greater uh, for the most part than two grams per milliliter or grams per centimeters cubed because remember those are interchangeable. Water uh, 1.0 gram per milliliter is on top of the land, and air, 0 0.0062, it's actually 1.2, sorry about that, I didn't realize I had done that until after, floats on the water. So our earth layers out based on densities. Now, what will oil do in water? Oil has a density of 0.91 grams per milliliter, vegetable oil that is, and Water is 1.0 gram per milliliter. So if I take a beaker full of water with our 1.0 gram per milliliter density, there you go, and I pour oil in, well, hot dog, check that out. The water is actually below the oil. The oil floats on the water because it is less dense. It's like having 91 cents to $1. 91 cents is less than $1. Now, if I take corn syrup and I pour it in, ooh, corn syrup goes down to the bottom. So that means that corn syrup is what? That's right, a little more dense than the water. Corn syrup usually lives somewhere in the 1.2 grams per milliliter range. When we talk about density of a liquid, we're talking about another term for the thickness. So the thicker a liquid is, the more dense it is. Oil is less thick than water, which is less thick than corn syrup. So now, can we make oil sink? Well, that's an interesting quandary. Let's take some rubbing alcohol. It looks just like water, but it's totally not. Um, remember, our oil has a density of 0.91 grams per milliliter. So if I pour the rubbing alcohol on the oil, holy cow, look at that. The oil went to the bottom of the rubbing alcohol and it's on top of the water because oil is 0.91 grams per milliliter and rubbing alcohol is 0.79 grams per milliliter. So rubbing alcohol is less dense. Where do you think water would go if we put it in? Did you say to the bottom? You're right. Good job. For layers and not mixing, the substances have to have somewhere in the neighborhood of a 0.1 gram per milliliter difference 
If they're only like a 0.05 away from each other, they're typically just going to mix together. Um, but when we have those thicker and thinner substances, more and less dense, that greater um, difference, then the particles tend not to mix together as much. So the average density of an object now, we're not talking about a specific substance, is going to be our total mass divided by our total volume. So a person isn't one substance. Um, and a lot of people will say when they go swimming, oh, I always sink to the bottom and I always float, blah, blah, blah. But if we break a person apart into some of our major components, bone 1.8, fat 0.9, muscle is about 1.06, and the carbon dioxide that fills a lot of our lungs is going to be 0 .0019. Um, that gives us, if we look at our, our total mass and our total volume, we'll get our average density of a person, usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.95 grams per milliliter. If a person happens to have a little bit more fat on their body than usual, then they might be slightly below that, like a 0.93. If they're really, really muscular, they don't have very much body fat, maybe closer to 0.99. And uh, if they're super, super bony, not a lot of fat or muscle, they might even be a hair over um, that one spot. And so that's where we look at our differences with, you know, people that float and people that sink. Typically, our sinkers are going to be our real skinny people and our real muscular people. Now, when you put an inner tube on, you blow it up with a bunch of CO2. Now that can decrease your overall density to 0.7 grams per milliliter because that CO2 is so light then you float real high up in the water because you and that inner tube are hanging out together, mass and volume. Like I said here, our real muscular person compared to our person with an inner tube on. Inner tube person floats much higher in the water and easier because that average density decreases, whereas somebody who's super muscular is going to be struggling to keep their head above the water. So how about gases? Air, like I said before, I apologize, I drew a six and I should have drawn, drawn a, a one. Air has a density of 0 0.0013 uh, grams per centimeter cubed. And if we think about a balloon full of helium, we usually think of it as floating. But check that out, helium 0 0.00017 grams per centimeter, about 10 times less dense than air. That's why it floats so aggressively in the air. And uh, if we look at the carbon dioxide that we breathe out, if you fill a balloon with the CO2 that you breathe out, it usually sinks to the bottom of the floor because CO2 is 0 0.0019 grams per centimeter cubed, which is that 0.1 decimal place about, you know, difference. And so we get that it's more dense than air and that it will sink than the air around us. So... Now, I want you to try to make a density column with at least five objects or substances. You can use liquids, probably need a couple of liquids at least, and then plop things in that bad boy and see if they float or sink and discover why based on their mass and volume, which is their density.